in our final um, video here in the linear relations and algebra topic and our final video in the section on simultaneous equations, we want to have a look at um, applications of simultaneous equations, so solving worded problems that result in simultaneous equations. Once again, like when we solved worded problems for just um, regular equations earlier on in the topic, the maths that we're really looking to, to develop here is your ability to formulate the equations. Okay, so I'm actually not interested in, in the answer as much as I'm interested in the process. So I don't want you to use trial and error number methods to just come up with the answer because that's not, I'm not trying to um, improve your number skills and your trial and error skills. I'm trying to improve your algebra skills. So I want you to focus on being able to formulate the equation or equations. Now, often when you have um, application problems that result in simultaneous equations, it can be possible to actually, depending on the way you choose to set it up, to actually just immediately get to one equation. And we actually, in our um, previous um, Word of Problems video, we looked at a number of examples that could be solved by setting up simultaneous equations, but we instead worked um, to set them up in a different way that mean, meant that we got straight to the equation. So I'm not worried if you create one equation or two equations. If you're going to introduce two unknowns, you, you're going to need two equations to be able to solve. Similarly, if you introduce three unknowns, you would need three equations. Okay. But if you want to try and just introduce one unknown, you then should be able to build just one equation. If you can't do it with just one unknown and one equation, then introduce a second unknown, make two equations, and then solve them simultaneously. Okay, so let's have a look at these two questions. Sorry, there's three questions here, but the first example. Two numbers have a sum of 58. One number is two greater than the other number find the two numbers. So the same process we used when we solved worded problems a while back, I want you to, number one, clearly define your variables. Okay, what are the variables representing? And let's be precise, x doesn't equal apples, does x equal the number of apples, the cost of the apples, the weight of the apples, what about, what numerical quantity is it equal to? Okay, um, so we want to define our variables, then we want to set up a pair of simultaneous equations or one single equation, then we want to focus on solving those equations or equation, and then we want to make sure we've answered the question. Okay, so let's introduce some pronumerals here. Let's introduce some variables. So let's let x and y be the two numbers. I'm going to introduce two unknowns, which means I need two equations in order to solve them. So x and y are the two numbers. The first sentence says that the two numbers have a sum of 58. So that means that x plus y is equal to 58. The second sentence says that one number is two greater than the other number. Now you could write this in two different ways. Um, so I'm going to say that x is equal to y plus 2. That is x is two greater than y. You could also instead write y is equal to x plus 2. It's just about which, which of x or y is the bigger number. It doesn't really matter. You're still going to be able to find the two numbers at the end of the day. Okay, so we've got our two equations. Now, that's the hard work. In the word of problems, setting up the equations is the hard bit. If this is a question when you have access to your CAS, if you are in a tech active section of an exam, by all means, once you've generated your two equations, you can solve them simultaneously with the CAS. And I would encourage it because it's going to be quicker. However, I want to use this lesson as a, an opportunity to continue to practice our algebra skills. So we're going to solve them all by hand, but we might want to check our answers with our CAS. Just, that just constantly gives us that practice of how to use our CAS and, and we're hence getting a bit more efficient and quick with using our CAS. Okay, so I'm looking at these two equations and I'm trying to decide is elimination or substitution the best method? Elimination could be used, but what I'm generally saying, I generally go for substitution first if I can. And remember, I'm looking for x or y to be the subject in one of the equations, which I have. So substitution is a good option. The second equation tells me that that is equal to x, which means I can replace x in the first equation with that. So I've got equation 1 and equation 2, and I'm going to be substituting equation 2 into equation 1. And when I do that, I replace the x with y plus 2. And then we're adding on y and it equals 58. So we've now got one equation with one unknown that we can solve. So 2y plus 2 equals 58. Let's take away 2. 2y equals 56. Let's divide both sides by 2. 56 divided by 2 is 28. All right, and then we're going to substitute back into either equation. So I'm then going to substitute y 
into equation 2. You could go into equation 1, but equation 2 already has x equals, and given that I'm trying to find x, that's going to be better. So x equals y, which is 28, plus 2, and so x equals 30. And so therefore, the two numbers, doesn't matter what's x and what's y, we introduce those. The question doesn't ask us for x and y, so answer the question. The question asks us to find the two numbers. The two numbers are 28 and 30. And again, you should be able to check 28 plus 30, they have a sum of 58, and one number is two greater than the other number. Once again, I know you could probably fairly easily do that by trial and error, but what I'm interested in developing is the algebra skills. Can you formulate the equation? Can you solve the simultaneous equations? We can verify, although actually, you know, these, these numbers fit the information in the question. But again, if we want to solve with our CAS, menu 371 to solve the simultaneous equations, two equations with x and y as the unknowns. x plus y is equal to 58, and x equals y plus 2. And there's our solution, x equals 30, y equals 28, which is what we got. Okay, question two. One pen and one pencil cost 57 cents. Two pens and three pencils cost $1.36. Find the cost of each. Okay, so we need to introduce some variables. Now, I would usually use pen for the cost of a pen, but we've got pens and pencils, so they're both P. Sorry, I'd use P for the cost of a pen, but we've got both of them a P. So let's just stick with X and Y or A and B or something like that. So let's introduce our variables. Now, X doesn't equal pen. X doesn't equal the number of pens x equals the cost of one pen. x is the cost of one pen, cost of a pen, and I'm going to make sure it's in dollars. We want to use consistent variables, and y is going to be the cost of one pencil, and that's going to be in dollars as well. Okay, so it's helpful to also define your units when you define your variables. It helps to make sure that you're consistent. So we've introduced two unknowns, and so therefore we want to make two equations. The first equation is going to come from this first sentence. One pen and one pencil cost 57 cents. So if we add the cost of one pen plus the cost of one pencil, we know that equals 57 cents. We need to be careful our equation doesn't equal 57 because our pen and pencil costs are in dollars, so it equals 0.57. You could define pen and pencil as being in cents, in which case it equals 57, but I think um, ultimately we can work around it once we've established our equations. The second sentence is going to give us our second equation. Two pens and three pencils cost $1.36. So two times the cost of one pen plus three times the cost of, three pencil, uh, of one pencil together is $1.36. These are pretty cheap pens and pencils, aren't they? Okay, so we've got our two equations. Now we focus on solving them. Now you could use substitution because it would be pretty easy to make x or y the subject here. So you could say x is 0.57 minus y, and then that is x, and you can replace x with that. That's a perfectly valid method. You could also let uh, make y the subject, and y is 0.57 minus x, and therefore that is y, and we replace y with that and we solve, okay, we could do that, or we could eliminate, um, we've got them all lined up, we don't have the same term, we've got x and 2x, they're not the same, we've got y and 3y, but it would be easy enough to double the top equation to make 2x in both equations, or to triple the top equation to make 3y in both equations. Whichever method you prefer, I might go with equation 1 times by 2, which is going to give me um, 2x plus 2y and 2 lots of 57 cents is $1.14. Let's call that equation 3. Now here is where we've got the same term. That's where we're going to be able to eliminate. Okay, So we're going to do equation 2 minus equation 1. Sorry, 2 minus 3, my apologies. So we're going to be subtracting these two equations in order to eliminate 2x. 2x minus 2x is 0. That's why we chose to subtract. 3y minus 2y is 1y. $1.36 minus $1.14, uh, what's that going to be? 22 cents, so 0.22. So that is the cost of one pencil. Then we need the cost of a pen. We can go back into either equation. Equation 1 is a much simpler equation. So let's substitute y into equation 1. 
So we know that x plus y, which is 0.22 equals 0.57, subtracting 0.22 from both sides, 0.55 or 57 cents minus 22 cents gives us 35 cents. Okay. Now then we want to answer the question. There was no x and y in the problem that was asked of us. We introduced those, so let's make sure we answer the question, which is to find the cost of each. So therefore, a pen, which one was a pen? X, so it's 35 cents. A pen costs, you can either write 35 cents or you could write $0.35. And a pencil costs, uh, where was our pencil? Here's Y up here, 0.22. So 22 cents or $0.22. Okay, finally, question three. John saves his 20 cent and 50 cent coins in a jar. When emptying the jar of coins, John finds that he has a total of 22 coins worth $8.30. How many of each type of coin does John have? Okay, so the unknowns are the number of 20 cent coins and the number of 50 cent coins. Okay, it's not just 20 cent coins, it's not the cost of a 20 cent coin or the value of the 20 cent coin, that's just 20 cents. It's the number of each coin type that we have. Okay, so again, 20 and 50, maybe you could use T and F. In fact, let's do that. Let's let T equal the number of 20 cent coins. And let's let F equal the number of 50 cent coins. Okay, so we've introduced two unknowns. So we're going to need to make two equations. And there's two key bits of information here, okay? He has a total of 22 coins. So the number of 20 cent coins plus the number of 50 cent coins equals 22. That's the easiest equation. The second equation is to do with the value of those coins. So if I have T 20 cent coins, okay, that means 20 times T is the value of those coins in cents. Okay? Or you could do 0.2 T is the value of those coins in dollars. If I have F 50 cent coins, 50 times F is going to give me the total value of all the 50 cent coins. For example, if I had two 50 cent coins, let's make it more than that. If I had seven 50 cent coins, okay, seven times, so that's seven is F, the number of 50 cent coins. If I wanted to know the value of them, I do seven times 50. Okay, it's three, 350 cents worth of value. So if the number of coins is unknown, I'm going to do 50 times the number of coins, which gives me the value of those coins in cents. Now, because I've set these up in cents, I'm going to need to make them, the total value is $8.30, but that's 830 cents. Okay. That's going to be equation two. Alternatively, you could have made your equation 0.2t plus 0.5f equals 8.3. Whichever you're more comfortable with, I'd probably rather work in the um, whole numbers. However, what I am going to do to make life easier before I solve anything is I'm going to divide equation 2 by 10. Okay, sorry, not by 2, by 10, just to get rid of all those extra zeros that I don't need. Okay, so this is going to be equation 2 divided by 10. In fact, before I even call it equation 2, I'm going to do that. If 20t plus 50f equals 830, that's the same as saying that 2t plus 5f equals 83. Let's call that equation 2. Okay, so now we want to solve these. Now again, we could use um, substitution by making t or f the subject here. t equals 22 minus f, and then we can put that in place of t. Okay, Or we can make f the subject. f equals 22 minus t, and we can put that in place of f. Okay. Or we can use elimination, in which case we would probably multiply equation 1 by 2. So we get 2t here as well, and then we can eliminate the 2s. Given we use elimination on the last one, let's perhaps, sorry, I'm just getting rid of those, let's perhaps use substitution. Okay, so this equation, so I'm going to take, before I call it equation 1, I'm going to take that equation and make t the subject. t equals 22 minus f. All right, and let's call that equation 1. And we are going to, oops, sorry, we are going to substitute equation one into equation two. All of those methods that I've suggested will work. It's about you getting familiar with the different methods so you can make good choices. 
And I don't think, I think all of the choices could have been equally good in this instance. So I'm going to substitute um, into that equation. And so what I get is 2 times t, and t is 22 take away f, plus 5 times f equals 83. And in making that substitution, we now have one equation with one unknown, f, in it. So we can solve this equation for f and then go back and work out what t is. So let's expand out that bracket. That's 44 minus 2f plus 5f equals 83. Okay, so that is 44. Negative 2f plus 5f is plus 3f equals 83. Let's take away 44 from both sides. 83 take away 4 is 79, and then take away 40 is 39. Dividing both sides by 3, so f is 39 divided by 3, which is 13. Once we've got f, we can then substitute. It's going to be easiest to go back into equation 1. We're going to substitute f into equation 1, and that's going to tell us that t is 22 minus f, so 22 minus 13, which means that t is 9. We then want to answer the question, which is how many of each type of coin does John have? Okay, So therefore, John has t equals 9. That was the number of 20 cent coins. He has 9 29 by 20 cent coins and f is 13 he has 13 by 50 cent coins okay so some worded problems for you to practice some from exercise 1k and some from exercise 1l again i want you to be flexible about choosing elimination or substitution depending on what's going to be most efficient don't worry about you know whether the question is in the substitution exercise or not. If elimination is a better option, do it that way. If in the elimination exercise, substitution is a better option, do it that way. As long as you can get to the correct answer in the most efficient and accurate manner, that's what we want.